United States Army presents The Big Picture, an official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. Today's big picture is very close to me personally. Because, in a way, what happened to Private First Class Ed Griffiths happened to me and others assigned to the Military District of Washington. We came here to fill particular jobs, saw the city, and then, because of our military duties, came to know a side of the capital that the tourist seldom sees as he passes through. Here is Private Ed Griffith on his way to headquarters, USA. This is Captain Frank Chapman. We will be landing in Washington in five minutes. Funny, I've seen this place hundreds of times in pictures. But this is the real thing. And what a kick you get out of seeing it for the first time. Matt's Military Air Transport Service lands a new group of servicemen and women in Washington. Some are passing through on their way to overseas stations, and some, carefully picked, who have been overseas or have attended specialist schools, are here to stay for a tour of duty. To Ed Griffiths, and to many arriving here, there is almost immediately a sense of something different about this American city. manufacturing here. Major activity, I guess, is managing the affairs of the people of the United States. Fort Myer, Virginia, home of several units of the military district of Washington. It was here that Private Griffiths was to report, to join headquarters company, United States Army. I'll keep these copies, Bill. You keep that one. You might be interested to know that this is one of the most unusual companies there is. In fact, it's one of the biggest companies in the United States Army. Stu, may I see you a minute? Right. These men work in the various offices in the Pentagon. The Office of Chief of Staff, Logistics and Communications. That's my assignment. That's right. Sergeant Queen, meet PFC Ed Griffith. Ed, nice to know you. Hello, Sergeant. He'll be your platoon sergeant. Oh. Glad to have you aboard. Thank you. Stu also works in Sinfo. Sinfo? Officer Chief of Information. You've probably seen him on the big picture. I thought he was an actor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just a soldier like the rest of you. Regular training program, Pentagon assignment, Reveille formation every Wednesday, and don't forget to check the bulletin board. And report over to the Pentagon Monday morning. First time here? That's right. Well, I suggest that, uh, you go on downtown, get on a bus, and take the standard tour. Folks, we're now approaching the most impressive building in Washington, the Capitol, symbol of the federal government. Up on top of the cast iron dome is the Statue of Freedom, looking out over the city. On your right now, the oldest building in the city, the White House. Moving around Washington, you get to realize that the federal government is a tremendous business. Nothing like it anywhere as office buildings of the government of the United States. I guess the architects meant them to look permanent, strong, and dignified. I think they got their effect.
we passed the Department of Justice on our way to the statue of a man who has always seemed one of the most interesting heroes in American history. Nathan Hale, who before he was executed by the British in 1776, declared, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. Touring the capital gives you a feeling of what America's great men were like and what they stood for. Jefferson, calm and determined, the leading author of the Constitution of the United States, a man who believed passionately in democracy. I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. The exact center of town, the Washington Monument. At the base, it's 55 feet square with walls 15 feet thick. It was the tallest structure to build at the time and was meant to symbolize the lofty ideals of our first president. From the top, you could see the layout of the city. The White House to the north, to the east, in a straight line, the capital. This is one city that was certainly planned. South, the Jefferson Memorial and the Potomac. To the west, the Lincoln Memorial. A copy of the Parthenon in Greece the driver said, but as you approach this memorial, Lincoln seems to be on your mind more than classic architecture. And then he is suddenly there. And somehow, because the statue goes beyond what you expect, he seems almost alive. Sad, wise, humble, and a quality of greatness that everyone seems to feel here. The quiet is almost like in church. The Pentagon, headquarters of the Department of Defense, the largest office building in the world. On Monday morning, Ed became one of the many thousands on his way to work there. Once built in record time, the Pentagon is still an efficient building for carrying out the huge amount of office work involved in the business of modern defense. His new job was in the staff communications office of the chief of staff. Major military messages flowing through this office keep the chief of staff in contact with troops in every area of operations. Ed's work was in a room where a record of every message sent is kept on file so that if one is called for, it can be quickly located. If, for example, the White House requests a message, this office has the reputation of finding and delivering it within 20 minutes. Ed's previous experience had been in message centers at lower echelons. When a new man was needed here, he was chosen because of his background and an excellent record. His job, like many others filled by enlisted men in the Pentagon, is essential work in a key area of our defense system. Working in the Pentagon, you get a sense of the importance of what goes on here. Just down the hall, for example, is the Office of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, 
where policy is determined for the defense of the country. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization has the office of its standing group here. This unit helps develop defense policies on an international level. Seeing NATO members in the Pentagon, you realize how day after day, the countries of the free world are working closely together. It's a good feeling to see the international atmosphere and to know that if it's ever necessary, we're ready to help each other with well-planned military support. Beside being huge in size, the Pentagon has just about everything within its walls. This is a city in itself and well worth a tour. With all kinds of shops and conveniences, the concourse is really a sort of American Main Street. A barber shop is for all service personnel. Here, whether you're a PFC or a two-star general, you receive the same treatment for the same price. A more basic problem, feeding all the people in the Pentagon, is answered by several large cafeterias. Lunchtime during good weather is sometimes an occasion for a short concert by the United States Army Band in the Pentagon's inner court. The Army Band and the Army Chorus are the representative musical organizations of the Army, performing at important ceremonies and concerts. Sometimes Army personnel, well known in the entertainment world, are featured soloists with the band. For example, one day I heard Steve Lawrence. I'm discontented with homes that are rented, so I have invented my own. Darling, this place is a lover's voice, where life's weary chase is unknown. Far from the cry of the city, where flowers pretty, Caress the stream. It's cozy to hide in, to live side by side in. Don't let it abide in my dreams. Oh, honey, how the lazy river valley, oh, mill run that lazy, lazy river in the noonday sun. Troubles and dream of me. A lazy river with that robin song. Waits for the bright new morning where we can move along. Blue skies up above. Every once in love.
In the military district of Washington, a scheduled amount of time is given over to just plain soldiering. Tied to a desk during the week, a man doesn't mind being untied during physical training periods. Once a week, Headquarters Company, United States Army, falls out in formation. Only at this time are these men brought together as a unit. You look very good this morning, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Oh, While each is a specialist, all share in the mission of protecting the capital of the United States. A mission appropriately symbolized by their patch, a sword across the Washington Monument. Serving at the nation's most important ceremonies is an organization that also wears the patch of the military district of Washington. First Battle Group, 3rd Infantry. During such visits as that of Queen Elizabeth, the third, the oldest active regular army infantry unit, often referred to as the Old Guard, is the organization in the capital representing the United States Army. In every ceremony, the third participates with something beyond precision. There is pride in having been chosen for moments of international importance. Here, the laying of a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. The mission of perpetually guarding this sacred shrine, 24 hours a day, every day of the year. This, too, is an honor for which the 1st Battle Group 3rd Infantry has been chosen. Today, beside the grave of an unknown soldier of World War I, lie an unknown serviceman of World War II, and another who fell in the Korean War. In the guard room beneath the amphitheater at Arlington Cemetery, men of the Honor Guard Company of the 3rd wait their turn. They carry out duties essential to the tradition of perfection surrounding every aspect of the tomb guard's mission. When the time comes to change the guard, the new man is ready in every detail for the assignment. Young men of the old guard are conscious of the tradition of their unit and the traditional ceremony that holds such deep meaning to all Americans. Left shoulder, pull! Forward, pull! For this assignment, each man must be a volunteer. Besides meeting certain physical requirements, the record of each man who guards the tomb must be of the highest caliber. Forward, pull! Guard, pull! Ready, turn! Return, pull! Perpetual Guard, a highly esteemed responsibility of the 1st Battle Group, 3rd Infantry.
The new guard begins a tour of duty that keeps alive the meaning of this symbol of sacrifice. Here at Arlington Cemetery is the final resting place for great military leaders and outstanding individuals from nearly every walk of life. The third participates in full honor funerals. A flag draped casket resting on a caisson is brought in solemn procession to the place of burial. A riderless horse accompanies the body of a general or flag officer. Prior to these ceremonies are preparations for which men of the old guard are responsible. The caisson is kept clean and polished. And the horses are carefully groomed. These are about the only ones left in this modern army. And here is the last blacksmith in the ranks of an army that once had many. Like the old village blacksmith, Sergeant Burgess likes some of the old-fashioned methods. For example, a hand method of fanning the flames instead of an electric motor available for the purpose. Better control that way, he says. No chance of forgetting to turn off the motor and burning up the shoe. Some of the old ways survive in this fast-changing army. A well-wrought shoe is given the finishing touches by an expert. The military district of Washington has within its command many units and services. Out at Fort McNair, besides troops, including elements of the 1st Battle Group, 3rd Infantry, are some high-level military schools for senior military officers. The National War College. The Industrial College of the Armed Forces. Under the supervision of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, these schools prepare men of all three services for command and staff duties in the highest echelons of the armed forces. There's Walter Reed Army Medical Center, world renowned for its achievements on the frontiers of medicine, as well as for the expertness of its hospital practice. At the White House itself is an army unit which, though not within the organization of the military district of Washington, serves the President of the United States, the White House Army Signal Agency. A small group of communication specialists make certain that the President is never out of touch with the nation or the world. Coded messages are sent and received by radio teletype. A switchboard is always ready in case of emergency. Direct lines are kept open from the White House to the most important agencies of government, a precaution aimed at continued operations during emergency. Television facilities are operated by the White House Army Signal Agency. Today, the work of soldiers in the Capitol is infinitely varied and highly specialized. Sometimes it is difficult to realize that all of the tasks here relate in some way to the basic mission of defense. Seeing what defense of the Capitol meant 100 years ago is one of the reasons why our company's information program includes a trip to a famous Civil War battlefield, Manassas or Bull Run. There is something to be learned here, something to give a soldier of today perspective on his present mission. A stone bridge on the way to Washington. Here was the beginning of the first great battle between North and South. On a bright Sunday, July 21st, 1861, the federal troops opened the attack. But the Confederates were finally to win on these fields under brilliant leadership In the area, we stopped to look at a diorama and listen to a description of a moment during the fighting. 
Here is one of the truly dramatic incidents in American history. The moment during the first battle of Manassas when Thomas Jonathan Jackson earned the nickname Stonewall. General B, desperately attempting to rally his men, has just seen Jackson's brigade drawn up along the ridge south of him. Inspired by Jackson's determined stand, B points toward the general sitting calmly on his horse at the top of the hill and shouts, there is Jackson standing like a stone wall. Rally behind the Virginians. Stonewall Jackson thus won his immortal nickname. No one can leave here without feeling that something beside guns is needed to win battles. The determination of fighting men is still essential, along with the weapons of modern defense. Here and around the Washington area are Nike Hercules sites, manned night and day. During a practice exercise, one can see that behind these missiles must be men determined to carry out their work swiftly and efficiently. In this practice alert, the signal is given to clear the area. At other sites around the city, other missiles are as ready as this one for possible enemy attack. Ready too are men of the 1st Battle Group, 3rd Infantry. In addition to their ceremonial duties, these combat troops are in active training eight months of the year. During an alert, they show their atop flight, fast moving outfit. Exercise within sight of the nation's administrative and military headquarters. At the heart of the nation are soldiers of the military district of Washington, protecting and serving the people of the United States. The big picture is an official report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the Department of the Army in cooperation with this station.